Champions Quick League, you got wide receivers, Curtis Samuel playing at a very, very high level. Uh, doing everything well, blocking, obviously uh, running and catching. A very, very talented player. Paris Campbell is also uh, one of our most valuable players just because of his uh, value in the special teams. I mean, he makes tackles on kickoff. He's one of the best gunners in the country. He's uh, Turned out to be very only had a couple of return opportunities since we put him back there. We just we just got a lot of respect for Paris and Terry McLaurin's also a, a program guy that it was great to see him score a touchdown and very valuable player for us. Marcus Ball played his best game as a Ohio State Buckeye. It was best effort. He graded the champion and offensive line. He had all five guys. Looks like yeah, all five guys graded out champions and did well. Don made the line of scrimmage and player of the game. J.T. Barrett, uh, the obviously set the record at a, a school such as Ohio State with so many great players that have traveled these hallways. And then uh, the other player of the game is Mike Weber. 14 carries, 144 yards, and playing very hard and doing good things uh, without the ball in his hands as well. On uh, defense, you had a bunch of them. Jalen Holmes, Hubbard, and Taekwon at defensive end. You had uh, Chris Swirling, and in the back end, you had uh, Carry on, Marshawn, Denzel, and Malik Cooker played very, very well. And we gave the player of the game to the entire defense to hold up a team to 116 total yards. Special teams, special teams, I think I left it on my desk. Uh, special teams. Damon Arnett. Damon Arnett. Damon Arnett did uh, exceptional. Kickoff team answered the challenge. They were, they took it all week now. Uh, they, they got it for a while since we, or I guess two weeks since we lost the, uh, we gave up a big one to Oklahoma, so we worked real hard at it. The guys like Rashad Berry, uh, uh, Eric Glover, uh, and Damon Arnett were outstanding. So I'll answer any questions for you. We'll start over here to the right, Clay. JT related to the story, I think, his first spring ball, and you uh, he threw, over, threw a screen pass, miserable, he said, and, and you got all over him. He, he, that just stuck with him uh, in terms of his evolution. Do you remember that comment by chance? It's one of the nice things we say that JT doesn't stick with him, just the bad things. I thought you were saying one of the great things. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I do not remember that. I do remember and that's well documented that uh, there's so much trust. He's the first quarterback we've signed that I've never seen throw. Right. Think about that for a minute. The first quarterback and since I was head coach that I said I would never do that. But it was one of those years where guys were committing early and I really a lot of faith in to say I trusted Tom. I did trust Tom, but I didn't know Tom. Uh, but I had a lot of faith in him. And then uh, Trent Dofer really helped with that as well. Um, so, yeah, JT, I mean, he struggled, but it wasn't fair. He was hurt in this most of the senior with a bad knee. And, uh, but he's obviously, he's turned into a great player. One other quickie. I'll get that many reps in here, Jerry. Uh, you went over a million followers on uh, Twitter. When we sat down in the preseason, you said, I want to lead the league and lead the nation in social media. You, I said that? Yeah, you did. <laughs> you said that. I never said that. <laughs> <laughs> I said social media. Yeah, you did. You, you said, know, we understand that Clemson is very good and we want to be better. Oh, oh it was a program. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I want to. Absolutely. That's absolutely true. And that's why we hired some people and we made that office what it is. What do you think of that platform to have a million people follow you? Uh, if it helps us sign a good player, it's great. If it doesn't, I don't care. <laughs> Front row middle, Dave. You've said when it comes to leadership, Tim Tebow is the gold standard. I'm just curious, how close is JT close. to that level? Yeah, JT is in his own way. is uh, you know, exactly on the same level as Tim, and those are two elite leaders. And there's some other guys that, uh, with, I mean, yeah, JT is certainly at that level. And then how would you guys emerge from the game injury-wise? Pretty well? Oh, I think we're pretty good. KJ Hills did close. Uh, Book, I put him at probable. Dante Booker. Uh, obviously, you heard the injury about uh, Demetrius Knox. I think that was before the Rutgers game. Yeah. Yeah, he's out for several weeks. Other than that, I think we're good. Uh, second row, uh, Ben. Irving, you just listed a bunch of champions, and not just those guys, but the roster in general. Are you surprised how quickly 
some of these guys are picking it up this early into the season? I don't like the word surprise. That's really you know, disrespectful. You know, not realizing that we have talented guys. And just, you know, uh, I think it's great. I, I'm excited to get out for another day of practice because that's one thing about young players. There's such a ceiling that there's you know, so much room for improvement. That Ben Victor played in that game. If you said three weeks ago, Ben Victor's going to play. Had a hard time lining up, didn't go hard, and kind of quit in the middle of plays. Now all of a sudden, he's a, he's a, he's a guy now. He's going to be a hell of a player here. So I just, once again, at any time, and that's not just this team, but young players just they really enjoy coaching them because once, they, once, as you say, the game slows down, you start to see some terrific <coughs> players develop. I mean, is that, is that recruiting at work that you guys can enter a season as the most inexperienced team in the country? And it's part of it. There's two phases. One's recruiting, and then a group of nine coaches and a strength coach at second and none that just grinds them and develops them and pushes them. And, and uh, the culture that uh, within the units is some of the big thing that happens around here. So all the above, and it obviously it starts with recruiting. Front row right, Austin. Urban, when you look at uh, Mike Weber, do you see more Carlos Hyde in him or more Zeke? More Carlos. Well, I can't lie. Well, he's a banger. He's a uh, Bumper and he's a plus yardage guy most of the time. And, and Zeke was too. Doesn't have the top end that Zeke has. So we're working on that. Uh, but he's, uh, and Carlos is great back. We've been, we've been fortunate. Last, uh, I think Mike falls right in that category. That, that top end, you, you said you were going to tease him about that yesterday, getting caught on the, the one long <coughs> run. How do you, I mean, is that just more time in the weight room? How would you improve something like that? If you, yeah, if just you keep see. working. Sometimes he's just not a, you know, Zeke was a, National level high hurdler in the 110s. And, and Mike's not, but Mike also has great feet, great power, and, and uh, you know, that's why I just compare him a bit more closer to Carlos. Okay. Front row right, Tim. Yeah, Urban. When you look at your offensive line, Isaiah Prince in particular, has he made huge strides over the last several games? What have you seen from him? Um, huge strides, and uh, just consistency. He's grown up. He's a, a great guy to be around. He's very mature now. He was very mature a year ago. And his growth and development, I can not credit Don Sarah Stud, but I also think Pat Elfi and Billy Price are pivotal in that kind of development. Of I'm sure you've watched Indiana, some video in Indiana, and you saw their video from the other night. Uh, as I said in the paper this morning, they said they have a D. You know, <laughs> uh, what do you see? What do you see when you watch them? Do you see an improved defense? What 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 just I jumps see, out at you about them? I, mean, I see an outstanding team. We've had our journey you know, our, it was the fifth year for four years in a row. It's been a yeah. Swing as hard as you can because that game is going to be. And this is by far their best team. And that's being very respectful of the other teams that we played against. I think they got excellent coaching staff. You can see uh, some really positive, really good things on videotape. And they, they played their game Saturday. That was a great win for that program. Uh, front row right, Rob. Urban, speaking of Indiana, how closely do you pay attention to comparative scoring? I know you look at the game that week, but do you look around the country at all to see what other teams are doing and, and maybe what the score is and how that relates to maybe what yeah, you're doing? Tom, Tom Herman was so good at that week. You know, he, you know, if I see North Carolina, for example, they're, I'll flip on their film and watch it. a couple series and I'll have, well, we have plenty of interns at GAs kept me up on this snowball mistake thing. And so we do. Explosive offenses, you know, Tom will do that constantly. Come in and maybe watch an Oregon and come in just for, and I think it's called professional development. I challenge our coaches all the time now to do that. I do that. And you come up with some great ideas. And back to Michael Weber, real quick. I assume you had a talk with him uh, not to try to be Zeke. You know, maybe maybe you didn't. How do you how do you handle that when a guy's coming well, in? Well, the, the opposite. We, you know, not so much because we have such, we're so. Uh, such an emphasis here about the selfless play, and that Zeke had a reputation of being arguably the best tailback in a couple of decades as far as blocking and things without the ball. So we actually wanted to be a lot like Zeke. We use that there as an example quite often. You said he's working off the ball too, the other things in his. Really well. Yeah, his, his protection is outstanding, his effort is uh, really pleased what he's turned into. Third row left, Eric. I think this season you guys have scored a touchdown. We've been in the final two minutes of the first half in every single game. Um, one of them was the pick six against Tulsa. But I think that's more than any time that you did last year, a couple more times. Is there anything that you're doing differently 
that point? I think JT just managed the ball very well. We're keeping our guys fresh. I think Coach Smith has got a nice little rotation of receivers. You know, we're playing guys 25, 30 plays, not 65. And just the wear and tear, usually that happens at the end of the half, at the end of the game, because you're just the logistics of the game or the, the timing of the game. So I think you're, you're seeing fresher legs. We look very fast at the end of the first half now, as opposed to if the guys play 35 plays and he's kind of blown out right before half that. Far left there, Lori. <clears throat> Coach, you guys were never under the radar this season, but with the success that your team has experienced so far, how different is your challenge psychologically with this team than it was at the beginning of the year? I was worried going into last this past game. You know, we had a bye week and had uh, two weeks to hear about how they played well against Oklahoma. Uh, they were challenged uh, pretty harshly by myself and our staff. And, 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 and there's very good leaders on this team, so I, I told them, I've tested them about five, six times already since, whether it be a day off or practice or during training camp or, you know, let them move out of the hotel there, you know, all kinds of little, I'll just test them a little bit to see if they answer the challenges. And they've done a very nice job. And that's a credit to, because normally 17 teams can't make those decisions because they don't know. But they follow the, the leadership of the team and they just do the right thing. And normally, you'll see the nice development of uh, players that you're Leaders in your team are idiots, and if you have problems, you got a problem. Far left there, Mitch. Last year, at times, early, it was hard to get everything clicking at the same time, and there was some struggling. Uh, this year, it seems like you got the train rolling full speed early. Um, what's the difference? I think any time you have a very good defense, and uh, you, know, you get that ball back quite often. I, you know, offensively, I, you know, Tulsa wasn't exactly a thing of beauty the first uh, quarter and a half, uh, but the defense hung around. You know, you know, anytime you have great defense, that's the, just the way the game of football is. You have great defense, things are going to get usually rolling for you at some point, even if you start a little bit. And then the fact that you have, you know, JT Barrett running the show, it's pretty smooth. He's uh, even when he makes a mistake, it's not a, usually. Usually it's not an awful one. We can rally right back up, but it starts with defense. Second row left, Ari. Urban, uh, another Mike Weber question. Um, I think that the beginning of his tenure here at Ohio State kind of got off to a rocky start with the way things you know, went with Michigan and, and you know, the high profile signing day stuff. I was wondering, obviously you guys got through that with Thomas Wilcher and everything pretty quickly, but when a player goes through something like that, how does that kind of impact their way they acclimate to the program, and was it a little bit more difficult with Mike, especially coming from the fact that he's from Detroit and the other schools, Michigan? What do you remember about the process of him becoming more comfortable here at Ohio State after all that? I remember it was zero. It was like a day and a half of I was shocked when it all took place, and I called their high school coach. We had a very honest conversation. This is how it occurred. This is, and we have some pretty good built-up uh, bank with high school coaches that this is the way we operate. We're not. We don't do things that are going to disrupt young people. So, I mean, it was it was over. I think it carried on for a little bit, maybe here, but not. Mike was great. Mike came in the spring. Within a day or two, everything was done, and then had zero impact once he started showing up here and getting ready to go. Okay, one follow-up, but unrelated. Um, Robert Landers has seemed to be playing very well. You guys need somebody to step up on that interior defensive line, and from what we've seen, it seems like he's really made an impact for you. Um, how has he been able to make an impact so quickly? Yeah, he uh, was very active in Saturday's game. Obviously, he's got a little size issue. You know, he's just a littler guy, but he's quick. He's twitched up, and, and uh, Larry's really doing a good job with him. So he's, he's uh, in the certain in rotation. We do need to, Draymond needs to continue to improve. They're all young players in there other than Mike Hill. So uh, you know, to answer your question, he's been really good, and we anticipate he'll continue to be better. Far right over here, uh, Nick. When you look at the wide receiver rotation, have you been able to use them like you would, like hockey lines, and you can mix and match them based on what you're seeing in the game and what you want to do? Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I don't micromanage that too much. There's a couple guys in my mind that when I'm when you're ready to call a certain play, I want in there. But, uh, skill sets aren't that different, and uh, it's nice to have a, a good, healthy dose of them. You said before, uh, you want 35 snaps. Is that? Just about freshness, or about seeing that you have that many guys that you think deserve play? Well, the way we—that's a great question. The way we play, it's a little bit like the corner position right now. We play zero man, and you 
can call it quarters or whatever it is, but they're, those corners are on an island. And basically what you do, you show up to practice every day, you take your ankles and you run for two and a half hours. In the game, what do you do? You simply go run for two and a half hours. <coughs> the wear and tear on bodies. And so Kerry's been very good at the, very diligent about uh, the number of plays. I want to say our corners play 25 plays Saturday. I think we like, held them to 50 some plays, but okay, say it's 30 plays, that's fine. It's when you start getting 80, 90s like we've had around here, because the backup's not very good, we're not prepared to step into that role. We have to drop off significantly, you can't take them out. And same with Joey Bullock, you know, he played 85 plays, that's just the absolute wear and tear on you. So the rotation really helps. Then final questions, far left, Matt? I know you want to be balanced, you always talk about that, but when you're running the ball as well as you are, um, how much do you even, like, you know, Oklahoma gave you almost rush for 300, you only threw for 150. Are you okay with that because you ran it so well? Sure. Uh, um, you know, how do you balance that with, you know, pass play? <laughs> well, I, I, that's kind of my thing, and I'll even stare at our scoreboard and see that we, certain times of the game, that we have to. Because it, it'll come back, you can't say we're going to run the ball, because at some point we learned a lesson in that brainstorm last year against Michigan State. You can stop the run. We're going to face some teams that can stop the run. Uh, that doesn't mean you give up on it, that you have to be balanced, and they can pay the price if they're going to put everybody up there to stop the run. So there's no doubt that you have to be balanced, and I watch it very closely. Coach, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you.